peeps. I have no idea how the audio is gonna be in here because it's a little bit echoey, so I do apologize in advance. This is where we are. Guys, if you're new around here, my name is Hannah Martin. Today, we are talking about five things I wish I did before I went professional. I think I've had a little bit more time to reflect recently. So I've just moved apartments and like all of that change has really got me thinking about things I might have done differently or things I wish I did sooner. I know that a lot of students watch my channel wish someone had told me before I went professional some of these things. And just when you're training, it's really nice to know there is a reason behind a lot of the work that you do. So without rambling, let's talk about them. Number one, group and quarter ballet work. So coming from a background in rhythmic gymnastics where you practically did everything, unless you're part of a group, like you did kind of do everything on your own. I remember with me, it was all down to me, like the amount of work that I decided to push myself with, use as much space as I wanted, if I want to go in that direction or this direction. Spatial awareness wasn't really an issue coming from that background. And then when I did go to ballet school, it was obviously COVID, so we didn't do that much group work or quarter ballet work. And even when I went to summer schools, I was just like, the solos, I can't wait to do the solos. And the group work, obviously I worked hard and I pushed myself just as much, but I didn't, like prioritize thinking oh i want the solo to look amazing coming into company life especially in your first few years you're definitely going to be doing quarter ballet work like it's kind of a no-brainer so i wish when i was at school i realized the absolute importance of actually prioritizing that over the solos in the first few years of you in a company that is the majority of what you're going to be doing the kind of fruits of your labor are how well can you stay in line? How well can you stay on the count? Often they just expect the technique, so that just has to be there. But the most important thing is if you can stay in line, stay on the music and be in the right space, sometimes that can be even more important than steps because the steps themselves often aren't that difficult. It can seem insignificant, but it's the greatest asset you're gonna have if you ever join a ballet company or to be honest, whatever company, Group work is so, so important. Get on the music, get on the counts, get the spatial awareness going, get the markers, get your stage lingo up to scratch, because that's gonna help upstage, downstage, side of stage, you know, stage left, stage right. That is going to help you a lot. The second thing, it kind of goes under the same kind of wing, learning how to learn very well, especially choreography how to learn quickly, how to learn efficiently. You know, some people are very naturally gifted at it. I wouldn't say it's one of my natural giftings. I think it's definitely a mental thing. Sometimes you get in a room and you feel when there's a lot of new stuff thrown at me, my brain doesn't quite know how to cope with all the new information. So I'm learning the best strategies on how to take in a lot of information very quickly and put it on my body. It's all about coordination and also learning how to count really well. When they want things on specific counts, you've got to make sure it's on the count, especially when some choreographers don't use music, they just use counts. If you don't know how to count well, this is a real, real issue. Not speaking from a uh, personal experience. If you're not able to pick up the choreography, you do fall behind. In a company setting, everyone is fast, everyone picks up quickly. Some people may have to do just that bit of extra homework. That's fine, there's no shame in that. If you're in a school environment and you find it difficult to learn choreography, prioritize that as a skill you really need to get a hold of. Get yourself in classes, which make you feel uncomfortable, which make you feel like you get behind, because that is the only way. You know, the other day I was watching a YouTube video and they were talking about learning a new language. I mean, each new choreography we do is like learning a new language, because each choreographer has a different movement style. And especially if it's not one that kind of sits well on your body, you have to learn how to adapt and you need to learn that language very quickly. Number three, I have talked a lot about this on my channel since I went through my injury, learning how to rest effectively. I wish I could tell you I've hit the nail on the head with this one, but not quite yet. Learning how to switch off is not only good, it's essential because otherwise you won't sleep. And if you don't sleep, 
you lose motivation, you lose your sanity. It's not a good situation. How best works for you to rest, whether that's reading a book, whether that's going to your favorite smoothie bowl place, hashtag Kulapoki. Going for a walk, watching a movie before bed or watching an episode of your favorite TV series. Whatever that is, find it and spend time finding what you like. It doesn't have to be the same as the person next to you. Find something unique to you. It actually gets your mind out of work. Because for me, my brain is always how can I be better? How can I improve? What's the key to me getting this movement that I'm really struggling with? And I find myself never leaving the studio, even though I can be out of the studio for the whole day, my mind can still be here. But trying to learn effective ways of shutting off is essential, otherwise you will burn out. Again, not talking from experience. <laughs> Okay, this one is personal to me, but number four is I wish I sorted out my point shoes earlier. I was in Merle for a long time and they worked for a season. I went through school and many of you know, I went through a bit of point journey there. I kept shifting into other shoes, but all of them were worse than what I was already wearing. So that was causing me extremely painful blisters or just not looking great, not dancing great. Like when you swap different pairs of shoes, especially if you're like in Gainers or Merle, to go to then like freed or block, it's like going from an automatic car to a manual. So it's a big shift and a big change for your body and you have to do it carefully. Officially, officially changed to freed now. I know, round of applause everyone, thank you. You can put the clapping emojis in the comments. Finally made the shift. I was very nervous about it because last time I tried to make the shift was when I got injured last time. I had a lot of help from Frances Collier. Very much recommend her. I will link her down below. But I just wish that these shoes I sorted earlier. I just wish I had more bravery to experiment with it when I was younger because I could have probably saved maybe a bit of time. I just wish I had been a bit more determined as a student to get the point shoes sorted and not just being like, well, these are okay. They're not ideal, but they're okay. I'm just gonna keep wearing them until I hopefully get a job. I wish I had just been like, no, I'm gonna make a shift. Even if I'm, my level drops for a little bit, I want these sorted before I go professional. I wish I had had that coin drop moment, pin drop. What's the saying? Whatever the saying is, I wish I had that moment where I was like, no, I'm gonna make the shift before I, Go professional because maybe as a professional i don't want to be faffing around with this anymore but you know what we've gone through the journey we are still going through the journey i'm figuring out which make of freed i like but we're getting there three or four weeks into freeds now and i haven't touched a merle and at number five perhaps the most important thing is i just wish even now i say this to myself i wish i just would stress out less about everything i think so often I hone in on every tiny little thing not good enough that I think should be better, that could be better, not just in my ballet life, but just in my regular life as well, like things I wish I could change about myself, the way I think, the way I move. I wish I would just stress out a little bit less and just know that God has a plan for everything and everything is gonna work out to his plan. It doesn't mean we're not gonna have dips and highs and lows and struggles and challenges, but if we put our trust in our creator, then actually things will work out eventually. Spoiler alert, it's gonna be okay. I've noticed this about myself. If I don't have something to stress about, I will find something to stress about and I'm focused on it. And that's all my brain space taken up by this one thing. And I do this on a regular basis. You're incredible. What you can do is awesome. Like you have something that no one else has. You are unique, you are brilliant and you are on your own journey. It doesn't have to look the same as the person next to you. I'm gonna leave you on that note. I hope that something in this rambling conversation might have inspired you or just brightened your day a little bit. Just reflecting on basically my past mistakes. I'm telling you them so you don't have to make them yourselves. If there's any other video ideas that you would love to see on this channel, make sure to comment them down below and I will see you very soon in my next video. Make sure to dream big and make it happen.